Guys, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start looking at the standard algorithm for multiplication. Uh, today it's just three digit and four digit times one digit. Uh, tomorrow we increase that to multiplying it by two digits, which is much more difficult. So today is our real practice to get the basics down for it. Uh, you should notice that while we're doing this, this, this is very similar to partial products, which is very similar to the area model. It's always the same multiplication because we're using the same numbers. So when we take a look at our first problem today, I'm going to take a look first at over here, 395 times 7. I'm going to start it off using partial products just as a reminder for what that looks like. So when we do partial products, I'm starting down here and I go 7 times 5. I just do the ones times the ones. Okay, and that would be 35. All right. Now, my next step for that would be to do 7 times 90. I slowly work my way across. 7 times 90, okay, that's 630, okay, and then my last step for this would be to do 7 times the 3, which is 300, not 3, is 2100, and now I would add all three of these things together, okay. Now the standard algorithm is almost the exact same thing, except where I'm putting my numbers after I multiply, okay. So here's what I mean by that. My first step for the standard algorithm is I still start ones times once. That's 35. For that, I'm going to put my 5 down here in the 1 spot. For the 3 that goes in the 10 spot, instead of putting it here in the 10 spot like in partial products, I'm going to put it up here in this 10 spot. Now what happens is I'm going to do this 7 times this 9 I don't really need to worry about the fact that it's 90 because when I drop my answer down, it's automatically going in the 10 spot anyway. So 7 times 9 is 63, and then I'm going to add these three that I haven't used yet. So that's going to put it up to 66, okay, because this is in the tens number. So I have 66 tens. So this 6 goes here, and then I carry this to the 100 spot, okay? Now I'm going to do the 7 times the 3, that's 21, and then I'm adding the 600 to it. So 21 plus the 600 is going to give me 2700, and I'm going to write that down, and I'm already done. That's it. I've already done all of my adding. The adding that I would be doing over here, that's done up along the top when I'm adding these pieces in. So the multiplication is exactly the same. I need to know the same facts. I'm multiplying the same pieces. And realistically, if I want to double check, I should come up with the same answer either way since it's the same numbers. It's just a little bit different in your organization. Partial products lets you space things out and keep things a little more separated. So especially people who have a little bit harder time staying organized, trying to put everything really tight together like the standard algorithm can be a little more difficult. Having a little bit more room sometimes is a little more helpful. Um, but the standard algorithm does do all of this adding while you're doing it, so it goes a little bit quicker. So you really just have to decide what's going to be the best for you. Let's take a look at one more example because I always like to have at least two. This time we'll go ahead and we'll do a four digit number. So let's do something like 2,863 and we'll multiply that by seven. I use seven a lot, especially at the beginning of the year because I noticed a lot of people have been having a hard time with their sevens facts. So I'm forcing you to learn your sevens. So I'm gonna do the same thing we did before. We're gonna look at it, what it would look like as a partial products. And then we're going to compare that to what's going on with the standard algorithm, the standard U.S. algorithm, at least. Other places do things differently. Okay, so let's see. Let's do it one step at a time for each. So partial products, I would be doing 7 times 3 is 21. Guess what? Standard algorithm, same first step. The 1 times the 1 is 21. My 1 goes here in the 1 spot, but I carry my two tens up to here. Okay, now partial products. My next step is 7 times the 10 spot. So 7 times 60 is 420. All right. Back over here on standard algorithm, I'm still doing the same step, 7 times 6, the same thing i just done, except 7 times 6 is 42. 
I'm not worried about all the other things. And now I need to add this too, the same two that's right here. I need to add that now while I'm going. So seven times six is 42 plus this two from earlier makes it 44. So the four goes here and I carry the other four. Now, same step partial product, seven times eight. Notice we're just slowly sliding our way down. Seven times eight is 56. So this is 5,600 because it was in the 100 spot already. Over here, seven times eight is 56. And I'm adding the 400 on that I had over here. I'm adding it beforehand. So 56 plus the four makes 60. So my zero goes here and my six moves up. Okay, last step for each of them. I've got seven times two over here, seven times 2,000 that is. That's 14,000. Over here on this side, seven times two is 14, plus the six that's already there makes 20. Now, this one is done. I've got the answer for the standard algorithm. Over here in partial products, I have not added things up yet. I did the adding for standard algorithm while I was going. Now I've still got to do it over here. So one, four, zero, carry the one, zero, two. Thank goodness it came out the same. I'd hate to have to redo this because I made a mistake. All right, so either way, I'm coming out with 20,041. That's great that either way it should work this. So you're gonna end up deciding what works best for you. The advantage I would say to standard algorithm is when I'm doing that multiplication, you know, I'm doing seven times six, I don't have to worry about the fact that it is 60 because I don't have to, over here, when I do the seven times six, I have to remember it's 60 because it's really 420. Over here in standard algorithm, you should know that it's 60. You should know the place value rules. But if for some reason you're just trying to get through it quick, it doesn't really matter if you think about it because the number drops down into the 10 spot already. So it's already built and structured so that everything comes out exactly where it's supposed to be. All right. Well, today we're going to practice the standard algorithm multiplying things by one digit. Okay. Uh, try your best with it. If you're struggling, please make sure you come to office hours and we can walk through some of the steps together. I hope this is helpful and I will see you hopefully in just a little while. Bye.